What? Alright, so for a while now, I've wanted to build something that can replicate Spider-Man's Spidey Sense, which I'm sure most of you who clicked on this video know is a super broken and an inconsistent power that apparently does whatever the writer wants it to. But the consistent gist of it is that it's a weak form of precognition that detects any danger, usually a physical threat, and alerts Peter of it. Fun fact, in real life, spiders actually do possess an early warning system called eyes. So anyways, obviously the first thing we need to do is come up with some sort of way to detect physical dangers. I started looking into several methods I could use to detect moving objects in my proximity, all of them using some kind of electrical sensor. I thought about ultrasonic sensors, passive infrared, LiDAR, which has already been utilized by Caleb at Hacksmith Industries, so I wanted to steer away from that, just so I could try something new. The thing about most of these sensors is that they can tell an object is around and the distance, but can't detect its velocity relative to the sensor, at least not without additional calculation. Not to mention, the range on a lot of these, while not bad, isn't spectacular either. No. I gotta say, sitting in this chair for a few hours and doing all this research is really uncomfortable. Especially for my back. My back! Luckily, I can get rid of that old thing thanks to today's video sponsor, FlexiSpot, and their C7 series ergonomic chair. Come on, don't, don't look at me like that. Look, it's not you, it's, it's me. I'm just, I'm just not comfortable anymore. Yes, I know, you've been here since the channel started, but I'm not in high school anymore. I spend a lot more time sitting and studying, and if I don't have good lumbar support, I might suffer from chronic back pain, loss of flexibility, and permanent changes to my spinal structure. I'm sorry, but you've just become too old and worn out. And right now, I, I need a chair that makes me feel more comfortable and supportive. We've had a good run, but it's time we part ways. The C7 series ergonomic chair by Flexispot is great. I've been using it for the last week, and I've come to realize that good lower back support and comfort makes all the difference. Plus, with Flexispot's Black Friday sale, for a limited time, the C7 series is much cheaper, along with the many other home appliances that Flexispot offers. Plus, you can get an additional $50 off when you apply my code. Still not convinced? The C7 chair comes in three different versions, each with their own qualities. I got the C7 Max with a footrest. It's got a maximum weight capacity of 300 pounds and accommodates a wide height range. The backrest can be locked at several different degrees and has very adjustable 5D armrests. The headrest is also adjustable and the seat features adaptive lumbar support that conforms to the spine when seated. And it also has a latex layer, much softer than standard foam cushions. This chair is super comfortable and I would highly recommend it as it's made working with my computer much more pleasant. Anyways, after looking into a few different things, I happened to come across something I found rather interesting. It's called the Doppler effect. I learned that it's a physics phenomenon that occurs when an observer moves relative to a wave. Basically, when a frequency is emitted, if an object is moving toward or away from that wave, the received frequency will be different from that of the emitted one, shorter if it's moving closer, and longer if it's moving further away. After weighing a few of my options, I've settled on this sensor, the HP100. Now there's a couple reasons I've chosen to utilize the Doppler effect over other sensing methods. Besides from the ability to measure velocity with more accuracy, among the advantages exhibited is range. This sensor in particular can detect motion up to 20 meters away and has a pretty wide detection area. In addition, the Doppler effect acts through walls of many materials, meaning that in the future I could potentially integrate it pretty seamlessly into my next Spider-Man suit. Now, that's not to say that there aren't disadvantages as well. For starters, the Doppler effect can be interrupted by environmental factors, and it's also pretty dependent on the size of the source. And while this sensor has the potential to tell me that an object is moving towards me from pretty far away, and with the right programming maybe even give me a general idea about how fast it's moving, it can't tell me how far it is, and probably the biggest disadvantage here, it can't give me a specific direction either. Which almost feels lore accurate, since Spider-Sense often seems to just say, move, and not much else. Now this could be remedied in the future with maybe multiple sensors that have a more narrow field of view, or perhaps secondary sensors that give me a direction when the object is a little closer, but since I'm just testing the concept today, that's a little beyond the scope of this build. Okay, so I've hooked up our radar module to this oscilloscope, and you'll notice that when I move my hand toward or away from it, the signal changes. 
Now, what I need to do is I need to build a circuit that makes this readable by our microcontroller so that we can activate the alert system. Also, quick side note, as far as I know, the Doppler frequency shift should only be affecting the frequency. I have no idea why the amplitude is jumping up and down so much, but I've only barely just learned how to use an oscilloscope, so if any of you know why this is happening, tell me what you think. To make the previously described circuit, I looked up the documentation for the module, wrote a list of all the components I would need for the recommended Arduino interface circuit, and made a stop by my favorite electronics store. Hey Rosie, how you been? I think they're somewhere around here. Just to be clear, there are modules that exist with this circuitry already done, but I've been trying to up my electronics game lately, so I thought it'd be fun if I tried to make it myself. Uh, and then just those two amplifiers, I forgot to okay. jot down how Then I simply wired up all the components on a breadboard, yeah, forgive my messy wiring, uploaded the Arduino code, and monitored the velocity on the serial monitor. Oh. Never mind, it didn't work, and I'm a failure of an engineering student. Okay, so that didn't work. Such is the curse of all engineers, not everything always works out the way we want it to. So, it doesn't look like anything's wrong with my connections, I tried fixing it a little bit. My guess is either I have a faulty component or two, or the more likely one in my opinion, there's an issue with my code somewhere. I'll troubleshoot it more later, but for now, I'm just going to use a module that I found on Amazon. Anyways, now that we know what we're going to do for our detection system, I think I should probably mention the alert mechanism right about now. So, I had a few ideas. One cool one I had was uh, to use bone transducers to play different Spidey Sense sound effects depending on how fast the object was moving. But the ideal method is the one that invokes the sense with the fastest reaction time. In general, that's touch. I will um, do further experimenting later on to see which of my senses has the fastest reaction time. But that being said, I'm just going to use vibration motors. For this build, I of course thought it fitting to house everything into a Spider-Man mask, and I thought it would be cool to finally build mechanical lenses into it. I won't spend too much time talking about this, since I can't take full credit here, I'm not the one who designed the models for this show. And yeah, I know, I'm lame for not designing it myself, but I do want to take inspiration from the mechanisms and eventually integrate them into my own design for my next suit. On the inside is a fairly simple mechanism that involves servo motors, which can be triggered individually or together when I squint my eyes via infrared sensors that detect the facial movement. Okay, so I'm gonna sew the mask together and I'm gonna put it on the face shell. I've already done the pieces right here. And now for the web lines, the original plan was to laser cut a second layer of fabric and then use this fusible bonding web. It's basically like a polyamide iron-on adhesive. But, I haven't really had time to play around with the idea, so I just went with good old puff paint. You'll also notice that there's a really subtle texture on the fabric of my mask. This wasn't screen printed. I've been working on something new involving fabric paint and laser cut stencils. Once I've refined the process a little more, I'll get into more detail about it with my next suit video. Ah yes, this is peak engineering. Okay, yeah, so the uh, setup is a little crude for this prototype, but um, I did call it a proof of concept, so... Okay, I'm here at my neighborhood park where luckily there's no one around to stare at us. Um, guy behind the camera is going to be throwing a bunch of random objects I found. <laughs> Not yet! <laughs> So, it doesn't always work perfectly, the motor doesn't always activate when I want it to, and sometimes activates when I don't want it to. And even when it does work, I don't always react quick enough. But when it works, it works pretty well. Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> shit. 
See how well I do without my eyes. Oh wait, hold on. That was really bad. Damn. <laughs> wait, hold on. No, it's not. No, I should have caught you walking by. You just walked by me, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it didn't. It didn't pick it up. No, that that shouldn't have an effect on the the wires are still. Yeah, that, that's why my motor got disconnected. Okay, all things considered, I think that went pretty well. Obviously, you could use some tweaks and maybe a little practice. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share it. And also, I'm cooking up something really special for Christmas this year, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Also, thanks to Flexispot so much for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check them out in the description below. Also, be sure to use my code to save an extra $50. You also have the opportunity to win free orders throughout November, so be sure to take a look for a chance to win. This has been your friendly neighborhood schizo, and I'll see you next time.